What is the most controversial food opinion you have? Only vaguely a food opinion. But, there's no such thing as a special occasion food. Like, cakes are often associated with parties. But I'm a grown man. And if I want cake, because it's Wednesday I'm gonna go get myself a Wednesday cake. I support this. A Monday cake would be most awesome. I'll savor it throughout the week. Orange Tic Tacs are not breath mints. They are candy. I heard that Tic Tacs are allowed to be labeled sugar free. Because they are below the 1G of sugar per serving rule. Despite Tic Tac themselves being basically sugar. This is easily confirmed. By looking at the ingredients label, the rule is actually 0.5 g of sugar per serving. Can put 0 g in the nutrition facts. I'm not certain they say. Can say sugar free. But since each tic tac is less than that, they can say 0 g despite being primarily be made of sugar. They are all candy. Almost all is sugar. I have family in the UK. Last time I was there an aunt caused a hubbub by putting baked beans with the mince in a shepherd's pie. I'm British. That sounds wrong. Beans for on toast, or with a full English, mixed into a shepherd's pie. Ugh. MSG is not the secret to good Asian foods. It is merely a small piece of a larger picture. I'm a chef by trade, and married to a Vietnamese person. And trust me, we use MSG a lot. But it merely is one color to a whole painting of colorful things. Some ingredients that are easily overlooked, especially in Chinese American cuisine are dark soy sauces, shaoxing wine, rice wine, rice vinegar, toasted sesame oil, cornstarch, and so much more. Sesame oil is so underrated. Frozen blueberries, frozen when freshly picked, are better than just fresh blueberries. When we used to go blueberry picking, I would freeze them before I ate them. And I'd eat them half frozen. Sweeter that way it seemed. Frozen red grapes are sweeter too. Frozen grapes are 10 billion percent better than regular ones. They are by far the fruit that has that effect above all others for me. I could eat frozen grapes until I'm sick lol. Mangus as well. As they're thawing they gain the consistency and flavor of sorbet. Partially frozen mangoes are a favorite of mine point throw them in with some partially frozen yogurt point also a fan of ice water. I like partially frozen things, I guess. If I crack an egg on it while reheating it, it becomes a breakfast food. If it's your first meal of the day, it's breakfast anyway. Leftover sushi for breakfast is fun. Sushi leftovers has to be the winner of this thread, yet it's just in the reply chain. Sushi leftovers is big no no in my house. Who has leftover sushi? That's what happens to my leftover fried rice. Makes a great breakfast. Isn't that where fried rice comes from? Last night's leftovers fried in rice and egg. They said controversial. Not straight fact. If I can't safely consume it, keep it the f off of my cocktail glass. I'm talking tiny umbrellas, many cloth or spins, etc. Even if a garnish is more decorative than delicious I think it's fine. As long as it wouldn't hurt you to consume it, like dehydrated citrus wheels. Basically, I have no interest in little pieces of future garbage as a decorative element. A bar in Indianapolis used to have a drink where the garnish was a wax dip cigarette butt. Fine why? What? I noticed in a lot of cooking shows, they stress not putting inedible things on the plates. Especially on cooking competitions, where you get eliminated for putting stuff on there that's neither a utensil or food. It's not just that people are idiots and can't tell apart food from other things, which is difficult with rubber and plastic because gummies exist. Herbs and veggies look like that if you are skilled with a knife. And let's not forget that it's actually cake trend where talented cooks mind deaf you. It's that as a chef, your paint on the canvas is food. If you can't use food to make your meal look delectable, then you fail as an artist. The only except is skewers and toothpicks, which must obviously stick out of the meal for handling. I especially hate cake males who slap stickers and plastic on the icing without clarifying it's not fondant. Not many foods on earth, no matter the price can top fresh warm bread with butter. My first stab at home baking was the day I discovered I could eat a whole loaf of bread without much difficulty. Muffins are just cake disguised as breakfast food. I'm a chef and I've been saying this for years. Breakfast imposter. Pretending to be healthy. At least a Danish is honest with you. People think muffins are healthy. Cake is breakfast food. Flour. Sugar. Eggs. 
oil. Perfect breakfast. Next thing you know you're gonna say French toast W syrup isn't breakfast. You know also eggs, oil, flour, sugar. No recipe is sacred. They're all eligible for reinterpretation regardless of your emotional attachment to them. Also, can we stop with the family secrets? Every damn time I ask for one of my mother's recipes I get a lecture from someone about not sharing it with anyone. It's a ragu sauce, not nuclear refined launch codes. Damn. Grandma probably got it from the side of a soup can anyways. MSG is awesome. I put that in a salt shaker 50 over 50 with table salt, and use it in everything that calls for salt. Pure umami is game changing. Makes good. You never thought to mix it with table salt. I'll have to try that. I use it straight while I'm cooking. There's a Cajun spice called Magic Swamp Dust that is MSG. Granulated garlic. Granulated onion. Black, white and red pepper and oil of lemon. It may have crack in it too. In Florida we have a spice mix called Everglades seasoning it's mostly salt and some other sh**. My mom once went on about how bad MSG is without realizing it's one of the main ingredients in Everglades seasoning, which we put on everything. It effectively replaced salt and pepper in our house. I will forever spread the good word of MSG. My mom says, isn't that bad to do? No, it's not. It's delicious and life changing. Do they like Chick-fil-A? Then they like MSG. Why are people afraid of it again? I heard that like back in the day probably a hundred years ago a food reviewer ate it and said he felt a numb in his tongue after going home and other symptoms like headaches. The thing is that it was never confirmed if it was due to the MSG, but people believed it. So anytime people tasted say Chinese food or whatever and experienced a headache they immediately connected it to that. The thing is that a lot of food naturally have MSG in it like onions or seaweed and even fermented sauces. There is nothing harmful about them, and no matter how much you're trying to avoid them, you're still eating it daily. Fun fact, everyone complains about Chinese food containing MSG, but Doritos are full of MSG and no one ever brings it up. MSG is only two ingredients, salt and crack. Pizza is healthy depending on how you cook it, and what ingredients are used, and what you define healthy relative to. Pizza contains more protein than many breakfast cereals and is less likely to cause a sugar crash. As such, pizza is a better breakfast than Lucky Charms. I run ultra marathons, and I eat pizza while running long distances. When going 50 plus miles, you are more speed hiking than sprinting. So eating on the move is necessary. At 5 feet 0 inches 48 kilograms, I still easily burn 5 to 6 thousand calories in a race. Pizza is easy to digest and good fuel for long haul cardio. It's a good balance of fats, carbs and protein. It can be calorie dense if you do deep dish or very light if you do thin crust. Adjust your recipe for your caloric needs. Pizza for the win. How yeah I'm having pizza for fast tomorrow. When pizza's on a badger you can eat pizza any time. I've got the cilantro soap gene. It is very hard having this gene in a primarily Mexican community and I always get the why are you such a pic I eat air. No, I don't want my tacos tasting like fabuloso got poured on them. The weird thing about cilantro is how many people seem to proselytize for it. When you tell people you don't like it, I have the gene too. They view it as a character flaw or something. I don't give people a hard time about it, but as a person who loves to cook for the specific purpose of sharing food, it does make me sad that they'll never know how cilantro enhances certain dishes. I only recently learned that there's an actual genetic difference between those that enjoy cilantro and those that cannot stand it. I really feel bad for the latter group. Imagine having such a severe genetic disorder that cannot be concealed. Apparently there's a similar genetic factor for whether you can smell the asparagus smell in your pee after eating it. To be clear, I mean everyone's pee smells funny, but some people can't smell it. I went to this very expansive restaurant once ordered a beautiful crab and white asparagus soup. I was so excited, took my first spoonful might as well have been drinking the dish water, $30 bowl of soup, and I couldn't eat it, stupid cilantro, I have a soap gene, but I still love cilantro lol, to me, it has a mild flavor that is somewhat reminiscent of soap, but I find it delicious, have you done a gene check or something, you can eat anything, anytime, have a 3 course pasta based feast for breakfast, do it, I dare you. 
Everyone I know says you can't do that, because it's not breakfast food and whatnot. You can do whatever the F you want. In the morning, when my husband tells me what I'm eating isn't breakfast food, my response is it is, if I'm eating it in the morning. Fun fact, in Thailand, they don't have breakfast food. Breakfast food is just whatever regular food you ate for breakfast. There's no special times of day that people eat certain foods, other than personal preference. Breakfast has nothing to do with the type of food you eat. It's breakfast because you are breaking your fast after sleeping. Eat whatever you want. I've eaten leftover mac and cheese for breakfast before. Nothing wrong with that. And cold. Leftover pizza for breakfast can be better than having it for dinner the night before. Yes. What kind of society tries to tell me there's an inappropriate time for my cereal? Cereal has wandered through all possible meals in my life. Literally. Lunch was the trickiest, but can be done. My go-to line about this is, a cheeseburger tastes the same at 8 o'clock in the morning as it does at 8 o'clock at night. One morning. I legit decided to say F you to normalcy, and ate a salad with raspberry vinaigrette for breakfast. It was such a good, satisfying meal to start my day. Cooking with wood or charcoal is superior to propane. I tell you what, my dad says butane is a bastard gas. I'm in Milwaukee and this is controversial around here, maybe elsewhere too. Don't simmer slash parboil slash boil slash whatever bratwurst in beer. Just take them straight from the fridge to the grill and throw them on lower indirect heat. Simmering in beer is a waste of time. Waste of beer. And it causes fat and spices to leach out of the brats. Lessening the flavor and texture of the brat. As a German I feel offended. Why would one do something so barbarian? As 17 year olds we were up at the up Michigan and had no access to getting more beer so what we brought was what we had. The last morning of camping, before leaving we had 10 beers left, and 4 guys. Three of us went for a boat ride around a creek 445 to smoke weed, and came back to someone delighted to tell us he's making the final brats. Nice. We are high and foods being made. Look for the beer. A nope. Used all 10 beers to make like 12 brats. Never been camping with that man again many years later. The local grocery store does a summer grill thing where they set up a shed in the parking lot with a grill and cook brats and burgers, and what not. The burgers are usually dry as the Sahara, but the brats are always good point except the incident point the person who was cooking the brats cooked them on the grill first, and then threw them in boiling water, and left them there till someone bought one. End result, bite through the skin, and get mouth full of finely ground meat paste that has no flavor whatsoever. Literally the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten. Every once in a while I'll cook brats in my cast iron, and I'll toss a splash of the beer I'm drinking in there I like it. But I normally go straight to the grill, and would never boil them lol. I'm so glad, that most of these are actually controversial. The brownie ice cream one made me a little angry, but then realized that was the point. Fresh garlic and dried garlic are not the same ingredient. For some recipes dried, is better for some fresh is better. Isn't this just cooking advice? And sometimes both in the same recipe lol I may just love garlic. I like brownies and ice cream separately, but I don't like brownies in ice cream. However, ice cream on top of a brownie is okay. The brownie being warm is key to ice cream on top. Will you eat the brownie and ice cream together if it was on top? Brownies and ice cream are not as good as a fresh cooked warm brownie with ice cream on top. People with severe food allergies should eat at home. As an actual unpopular opinion I'm sure this will get buried. But I'm 100% serious. I did a decade in culinary and I can guarantee you that eating out with a severe seafood, mushroom, nut or allium allergy is no different than rolling dice with your life. Back of house workers will generally have some degree of training in avoiding cross contamination. But very few will be able to reliably guarantee that you won't be firing a pin of freen into your thigh by dessert. I can promise you that Braxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
just so he doesn't feel a little left out when you order to key it. Our entire menu is bread and you're telling me your little kid will drop dead if any bread comes within like a 5 mine radius of him. Please don't put that responsibility on me as a worker, because we cannot guarantee that it is 100% allergen free. One time I had a customer ask me if something had a certain ingredient. I said I can't guarantee it doesn't have it. Because part of the ingredient list here is just spices which could include that thing then she said ah it's probably fine then later called to complain saying I told her it would be fine. Some people are just liars or brain dead or both. I would have not served him. I used to work in product development for a cookie place and we were working on developing a gluten free line. Obviously we had flour in the test kitchen, because we were still working on other projects at the same time, but we'd sanitize everything extra. When we were doing our gluten free stuff, we weren't selling or serving the test gluten free marked as gluten free. We just didn't want excess gluten contaminating the recipe and possibly altering it. I brought some test cookies home to my mom, who is diagnosed celiac. She gets a pretty bad stomach ache with a small amount of gluten, and if she eats too much she can be hospitalized, and made sure she was aware they didn't have gluten in them, but they were made in a kitchen, that made other products containing gluten. She ate a couple, and ended up feeling sick, just because there was minuscule amounts of gluten either in the air in the test kitchen, or still on the machinery somehow. There is a 0% chance I would have given those to her if she was deathly allergic and there's no way in hell she'd have a step foot or receive food from a sandwich shop. That's ridiculous. When I ran a restaurant, I had this conversation nearly every week. I'm deathly allergic to fish, so make sure it's not in the dish. The pad thai is made with anchovy oil. I can't take that out. A that's fine. It's not that bad. So what I'm really trying to say is People have no problem lying about these things for no discernible reason. For FS sake, parents are the worst for this. I've cooked for kids with multiple allergies and their mum or dad orders everything the kids is allergic to cause they can't have it at home. I make sure the allergy meal is carried separately from the rest, but seriously wonder at the stupidity of the parents. In high school I washed dishes at a Mandarin Chinese restaurant. The cooks were all recent immigrants to the US. I recall one night the busboy, white suburban kid like myself at the time, relaying a question from a customer to the cooks, who didn't really speak English. The question was, do you use peanut oil? Later in the evening the ambulance came. I can't fathom somebody with a severe peanut allergy going to that kind of place. Even if we didn't use peanut oil, and I'm pretty sure we did, there was peanuts in a lot of the dishes. My friend has an apparently deadly shrimp allergy. She told the, the restaurant that she had a seafood allergy, but I dk how there was actual shrimp sauce on her dish. She started to have a rash but nothing too bad. Thankfully it went well for her, but it's true that it's super dangerous. Cause even if you pay attention something can slip, or be on your hand, or if the knife touched something with the allergy it could be dangerous. Allergies are something, that shouldn't be played with. I once refused to serve a customer, because of the severity of their seafood allergy. They'd come in previously, and gone into anaphylaxis, because another customer two tables away had ordered grilled shrimp. I don't know how they expected my establishment to be able to safely cater to them. I can't even begin to conceive of the logic with an allergy that severe. It simply couldn't be reliably done. I have a mild peanut allergy and honestly I won't eat much that I don't make myself the biggest problem I have is other people trying to accommodate me and I hate it. If everyone else wants Thai then we should do that I just won't eat anything stop trying to find a place that works for me. I'm an adult and I don't turn into a pumpkin. If I miss a meal I'm fully competent to cook at home, and I'm mostly there for the social aspect anyways. I have celiacs, went to a family thing with my wife's family and they were legit offended I didn't eat anything, like I don't know what's in it, and I don't want to get sick, let me not get sick in peace. As a celiac I co-sign this, please, everyone, stop cooking for me, I don't want to eat it, because I'm like 90% likely to get sick. But I also don't want to look like a dick by turning down something you made especially for me. But then cut with your bread knife, which gets used on the daily for gluten. It's no fun. Please let's all be happier and just not go there. Torino's party pizza is delicious. I'm still kind of bummed they ask where now. Dandelions and other edible weeds are tastier than most salads sold in markets. You can also eat daisies, marigolds, impeachines, chickweed. 
Stinging nettle you can eat more than you think that are some eggs and pearls I eat sometimes. Dandelion. Sid voice. Must be the lashed one of the shishan. MMMMMMM. Pine cones. Broccoli is tasty. I don't think this is nearly as controversial anymore. Ask anyone what their vegetable tea list is, and broccoli will almost always land within the BA range. Love broccoli. Delicious. Cancer fighting. Beautiful little trees. Little trees are what nephew used to call broccoli. Roast your broccoli everyone. With some olive oil, garlic, pepper, and salt. Chef's kiss right there. Love roasted broccoli and Brussels sprouts. But I also love steamed broccoli. Although not steamed to mush. Some crunch left is necessary. And even the next day, cold, with a little salt on the broccoli, goes with lunch, or with a bit of olive oil and balsamic. Air fryer for veggies has been my lifesaver. Most of the reason we all hate our veggies, at least me personally, is because I grew up with our parents either steaming them, or out of a tin can. Either way they became boring to eat. Fast food on occasion is fine if you're trying to be thrifty, or you're in a hurry. A cheap greasy cheeseburger can even be a nice tasty treat every once in a while. However low-end chain restaurant like Chili's, Applebee's, TGI Fridays just serve shtai frozen food, and should never be visited. They're the same price as any other decent restaurant. I have recently started adding pesto to omelets game changer. The difference between good coffee and great coffee is not worth the amount of energy people spend on that difference. We have too many restaurants, and can shed like 80% of them. Too much fast food, mid slash low tier chains, chilies, and future bankruptcies, where like somebody gets an inheritance and the only thing they can think, is opening a diner. Lots of good food takes time. I can't spend 10 hours every day smoking meat or 4 hours prepping shawarma. Sure get rid of all the frozen pre-prepped garbage restaurants which is more than 80% of them. But real homemade food and mom slash pop restaurants are a boon for society. We have too many chain restaurants, and not enough small ones. Yeah. Like if I'm driving through different states and cities I want to pull off, and get some good regional slash local food, and have it be different everywhere. Not pull off to the same three dystopian neon signs everywhere I go lol. Eating the same thing every day is fine. I usually go through 6 months stints of eating the same dinner at least 3 times a week. Can stockpile ingredients. Prep and cooking becomes second nature. Eating something you know you'll like all the time. Especially if it's rice. That's a weird way to spell tacos. Rice is great when you're hungry and you want to eat 2000 of something. I used to tell that joke. Whenever someone mentions rice, I still do. But I used to too. R.I.P. Mitch. Most people who think vegetables taste bad don't know how to cook them properly. True. But I hear this all the time. Not really controversial. That excessive pickiness about food is worth breaking up over. How do you break up with your kids? They eat pasta, tomato soup and rice. I don't have any, but just tell them it's not you. It's me even though it's them. I did not want to spend my life with someone who ordered hamburgers at every single restaurant ever, whether it was a Chinese place, Mexican, Italian, or even a just a pizza joint it was the effing hamburger. Eventually I just blew my top. This dude had the audacity to be about not finding anything to eat in Korea, because nobody apparently had his basic a hamburger. He was not even interested in trying anything else, ever. I was on vacation in Hawaii. When I was 16 with my two aunts and brother, we go to this rundown looking place on Ohu that apparently looks bad, but has the most amazing food, like every table is packed Thursday night through Sunday. My aunt tells me they have the most amazing burgers, I order one, and she proceeds to get mad, that I ordered a burger, and not some fish or shrimp meal. I'm like first, you said they had the most amazing burgers, so I need to try it, and second if you didn't forget our motherization. So fish and seafood is like 2 to 3 nights a week at our house. I knew a guy whose diet was essentially 80% bits crackers. He was short, skinny, and all his joints ached. Gee, I wonder if it has to do with your shtai diet man. I like raw carrots. I love flavored sparkling water, lacroix slash waterloo etc. People always have to make some comment about how it barely tastes like anything. For a zero calorie beverage, it tastes a hell of a lot better than diet soda. And yeah, regular soda or sweet tea or lemonade do taste better than sparking water. But they have like 150 calories in a can and rot your teeth. 
I'm sure smoking crack feels even better than drinking a soda, but you're gotta draw the line somewhere. I tell people to just add a little bit of their fat juice to sparkling water. You get sweetness and flavor without as much calories banned sugar, it helped me beat my soda habit. I love lacra war in like this Pavlovian kinda way. Like I associate a cold fizzy can with drinking beer. If they put it a plastic bottle like the either seltzer waters I won't like it nearly as much. I too love flavored sparkling water. I think a big part for me is that I do not drink soda at all. I drink coffee, water and alcohol. Rarely go for juice. Never ever soda. Lacra war is very flavorful to me. Enough where I won't go for a flavor that won't mesh well with my food. People constantly give me shrit. Taco Bell is good, and the reason you your brains out is likely because you drank too much alcohol and then ate too much food before passing out at 3am. I have never, not once in my life, had an issue with Taco Bell. I have eaten a lot of Taco Bell. I have eaten far too much Taco Bell in one sitting. I have eaten most things on their menu. The only problems I might have are to be expected from overeating fast food. Like your stomach feeling a bit gross for a while. Redditors complaining about Taco Bell giving them the chesses because their body can't handle all the fiber since their main diet consists of Doritos and Mountain Dew. I have seen Redditors arguing that fruit is just as unhealthy as candy because of all the sugar in it. Fruit is just as unhealthy as candy because of all the sugar in it. This drives me crazy. I, at one point, lost a lot of weight in a year, and of course people ask how, did you do it? The answer is of course eat less and move more, but often a specific I gave, was I limited my intake, except when it came to fruits and vegetables, which I allowed myself to eat whenever. People would always come back with you know how much sugar is in fruit, you know what else has a lot of sugar in it, a ton of processed crap I ate, before losing weight, you know what that food didn't have any other nutritious value. People really tried to dissuade me from eating fruit, of all things. What makes pizza is the sauce, dough, then sauce, if the dough is wrong or bad the pizza will be bad. Parmesan cheese improves the flavor of literally any soup.